G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my video. Today, did you see that picture up there in the opening credits there? Beautiful little cute picture in it, eh? Well, that's what we're going to paint today. And on the canvas, I have the size in centimetres and inches there, for those of you who want to write them down. And also, get some colours going up the bloody screen there as well, so you can pause it and write them down as well if you want to paint along with this video after you've watched it a couple of times, all right? Um, yeah, get, give them a bit of time to go up the screen there. And what I've done, I've done some things on the canvas here that I'll have to point out to you what I've done, all right? So get on over here and I'll explain it to you as we get painting, all right? So I've drawn the layout, what I want to do, and I've got my koala on the surfboard here. I found this koala on the uh, free site Pixabay, but I've just incorporated a surfboard on him. Now I've put tape over him and I've used a scalpel and cut around it so as I can just go willy nilly and paint this painting then pull that tape off and paint the koala on the surfboard okay. And this was suggested to do this to me by a Chris C. He or she was in my last um, Friday night live show and suggested something like this and so this is what we're going to do, something different. Okay, I want to do the sky and I'm going to use my putter on a brush and um, get the white craft paint, the student paint, mixed up with some retarder, just or retarder, so as I can just get a good sky going. It's only a small sky, as you can see from this point down to the top of the wave. Okay, so we're just going to get this over where the sky is going to be because this will allow the paint to lighten up when I put the actual coloured paint on there and I want the water horizon about there just behind the wave. Now I did a wave a few tutorials ago, a big wave. I'm going to use pretty much the um, structure of that wave for the wave that this koala is surfing on. All right. all right, we've got the sky done, the sky area done. and. Um, what I might do is just the top of the wave there, okay, somewhere around there. Do that as well, because the horizon line, I'll, I'll have that all prepped up as well. Now I want to use phalo blue for my sky, okay, so we'll just get some phalo blue out there. And I've got some grey if I want to add some clouds, so we'll get this. Now there's no retarder in this now, it's just neat from the tube and we'll get the sky going, all right? And remember, me horizon line's gonna be about here, okay? So that's pretty much where I want the sky to stop, somewhere around there. I'll just dot it in there so you can see, somewhere around there like that, all right? So let's get the sky on. See, now that white underneath is allowing this to lighten up a bit so it's not so dark. I, I do want a light sky. And I'm going to bring this down to the horizon as I go, try and keep it reasonably level. Okay, and I'm just going to massage that in. If I feel it's a bit too blue, I'm going to pick up some more of the white on the board there with the retarder in it. And I'm just going to push that in there, just so it's the value I want. You make your sky the value you want. I'm thinking that'll be all right. And do we want clouds in the sky? That's This is where you say now, well, yay, I do, or no, I do not. But I want to put some clouds in there, just because it's an artistic little painting. All right, so I'm just going to put some clouds in with my hog bristle fan brush and titanium white neat from the tube. And I've got some grey there from a tube as well, a mid-tone grey, if I want to add some shadows in them. So, I don't know, I might just put something over here coming overhead. So I'm pushing it on, coming from the middle, but overhead. Just get some sort of cloud formation in the sky there. 
We've got all that turmoil and mixed in with the blue. I'm trying to create a bum on there as I go. And grab your appropriate blending brush and blend that down, keeping a bum on there. That way it gives it the illusion that the cloud's over your head and that bum is where we add the gray. Wipe your brush as you build up that paint from blending. You can see this brush, it's pushing turmoil all through that cloud. There we go, it's fading away off the edge of the painting there. Tickle the tops a little bit, just very little. One cloud done, too easy. Now I'm gonna clean that brush. I've picked up some more paint on it and we'll probably put something else over here. So I'll make a, just let your brush make the cloud. It's just one here like that. I think that'll be all right. I'm gonna use that same blending brush. Now see all this surface of the brush here? That's gonna go against the cloud and create what I call turmoil. See, I just did all that. It's turmoilizing the paint onto the sky. Instead of just blending in one, down to one tone or value, you're creating the turmoil within the cloud. Practice this procedure, it's a lot of fun. And then you'll go, wow. Okay, there's a simple cloud. And we'll put a bit of a bum on this one as well. Just down there at the horizon there, where it's sitting way back the way back there. All right, simple. Grab yourself another brush, pick up some of your gray value there if you wanna put some shadows in your clouds and pretty much where the bum is. You've seen me do these before, regular watches of mine. Keep the bum. I mean, this is gonna be sort of a cartoony looking painting, but not too cartoony. We want some aspect of wowness and greatness and bullshit in there, you know? So there's that cloud and the same on the other side, something. Find out where you want your, your darker values, your shadows in there. Try not to think about it. Just let, let them happen on their own. and then we'll just put the yumminess. Now, if you're new to my channel, and you're, what does he mean, yumminess? The yumminess is um, the, see, they're, they're pretty much a two-dimension cloud. So I'm going to pick up some more white paint on that smaller fan brush and just crack in the third dimension, which is the yumminess. I'll show you on this cloud. Now, you sit this yumminess down, but you don't wash it all away as you're blending it. You're leaving the, the vibrancy of it there, and it's creating that round third dimension, in my view, of a cloud. Bring it into some of that grey if you want. Leaving the brightness of it there, but you're sitting it down in that cloud. I'll zoom back a bit so as it's not so close and we'll do the other one there now so we're going to crack in some yummy I mean, i'm not even thinking i'm just banging it over there any old way and you can look like i'm seeing here this bit here is a little bit bright i get a bit fussy when i do my clouds and then sometimes i don't really care but at the end of the day you'll create your own style it'll just come to you and see that that's got a third dimension and yumminess in it okay pretty easy but lovely clouds okay i've just opted for some french ultramarine blue for the water in the distance there so we'll load our brush up with this now this white here is still wet and got that retarder in it and work out where her horizon line is and get that in there get my arm out of the way Okay, so we want to try and keep this reasonably straight. Just bring it across there like that. Doesn't have to be really sharp because it's in the background. You don't want the horizon line in focus. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring that down. That's just the ocean water, something to resemble the ocean water. All right. 
Now I've dried this because we're going to start putting the wave in. So I've got some turquoise on the palette here and I want to create a darker value of that. So that leftover phalo blue we had there, get some of this mixed into it and get a darker value. Beautiful. And then we're going to use this, that and maybe the white just for the wave. Something basic, simple but effective and it'll suit the painting all right. So I'm gonna start off with the wave. I've got just the plain turquoise in my brush and the top of the wave is about here. If anything, I'm putting a bit of an arch on it. And that's why I've masked our koala up so I don't have to be painting around it. You just paint willy nilly and then you peel it off and start with him. So there, and then the bottom, the bottom area of the wave, it'll make sense now you watch this video all the way through, so as you'll get an understanding what's in my head. I'm just making this bottom bit a bit wavy. There we go, like that. And then I'll just brush this in. I want to get all this colour in, okay? And if anything, I'm brushing it on a, a waving motion, the way the wave's going to be hitting. And this is why it's important to watch the video first. So when you've watched the whole lot, you'll know by your habits, my mistakes, if I make any, what you should and shouldn't do. Okay. Now we've got pretty much the base color for our wave in. I'll just make sure it's all around our little koala there. Okay. Now I know it's going this way and that way. Very similar to the big wave painting that I did, okay? So that's pretty much what I want to try and copy onto the painting I'm doing now, that sort of colour and layout. Now I've got some cadmium yellow light and in this turquoise I'm mixing up just a bit more of a greener value of that as well. You don't have to do this, it's up to you how detailed you want yours. I'll put a bit of water on that just so it won't skin up. Lovely day here today. I'll tell you what, it's beautiful outside. Might go for a drive in my car later on and just enjoy the day and the weather and life itself. All right, got that ready as well. Now, let's grab our darker colour. So I'm going to use another flat brush. I'll get it on both sides. And pretty much in the middle of the hub of the wave, the wave's going to be here. So pretty much there. I want this creating the round of the wave. See what I'm doing? Just something simple and easy. Load your brush up again. I don't want to be making a big detail wave, just something that resembles a wave. Now this is wet. It's going to be scrumbly. I don't want to dry it too much because I want the paint to be able to merge. So I'm Picking that up, where are we? Somewhere around here. So we're getting that dark band pretty much all the way through the wave. Okay. And what you can do, see I'm, because it's wet, I've got a lot of, um, you know, stop start motions there. So what I can do if I want to, is I can just brush them out like a clever little monkey. Okay, then we have that green that we mixed up and we can put, you know, traces of this through there as well. Okay, just to break up the colour of it. But what I might do is dry that because it is getting a bit awkward. So see, there you go, you'll know now when you're doing yours to dry it. I'm not going to dry it 100%, I'm just going to dry it Till it gets a bit rubbery all right and you watch the difference you saw when i put this darker blue on how it reacted with that turquoise now when it's a bit rubbery you'll see a difference again so then you'll be able to tell yourself well i don't want to draw it or you know what i'm gonna bloody draw it because it works better okay so we've done that now we grab that darker color again and just watch it'll sit on there but it's still rubbery enough to merge it if you need to merge it, scrumble it, whatever you call it. 
So here we go, bit of darkness. You always want the darkness where the white's gonna pop. And then we'll get that green now and we'll try and trace in some, just some lovely watery, colory motions in there with that okay. Up there, up there in the wave. Use this to hide any brush stroke mistakes you think you might have made. Just somewhere like that. Follow it around, follow the wave around. And what sets all this back is the actual white that we add into it later on. Just so you can see where we're going, I'll get the rest of the wave put in. So virtually along the top, we're gonna to have fluff, white fluff, and this wave's coming down somewhere around here. Okay, getting ready to crash down, okay? So, and it's gonna have all that fluff along there. I'm just putting it there now so you'll see, but I'll detail that later. All right, and these lines, try not to do these too much that way or that way. You gotta try and keep them in the way the wave's going. But why I put that there is just so I can see where I get, because I want my darkness pretty much behind or there. Scrumbled it in in a way. That's the darkness of me wave. Okay. Before I put the white on, I just want a bit of darkness at the top of this wave as well. So I'm gonna get some of it down there as well. Okay, just on this half. You might not even see this, but it's gonna be there. You know what I did just gone and done? I plopped the brush into the cleaning jar there and a big splash fell out on the floor right on my foot. I'm wearing thongs. And there's nothing worse than wearing a thong and you got the water splashing on it. Gives you that uncomfortable feeling. All right, that'll do. I'm just gonna block in this area here. So I'm picking up that leftover gray and what that, um, what was it, French ultramarine? And this is going to be the shadow area for where the wave is splashing onto the shore there. Okay, I've done that. It looks like snot at the moment, but we'll bring that to life when we get there. Now we're going to fix this part of the wave up. I've got a bit of a, this is from the art shop. It's a one and a half inch. It's a bit of one of those scratchy brushes. So I want to use that to pick up the titanium white out of the tube, neat from the tube. And we want to get that, um, I'll mix it with some of the craft white as well. So it's got some looseness to it. And why I picked this brush is, we'll get those scratchy lines, hopefully. I'll break them all up on the edge. And I want to bring them down from there, but you know what? I've just thought I'll put some tape there, just on that bit there, just so as we don't go killing our background area. So I'll just put some of that on there, just a low tacking tape. Bend him around. Okay. Just so as I can, with ease and with confidence, just get this. Now, like I said before, get this scratched in, but on the right, yeah that's pretty much like that play with it I want about there that much right on the edge there okay we could take that tape off now he's done his job so we pretty much got that done with confidence also we need to Add, I'll put that in there, don't need that now. I want to grab all the paint, the white, and get all this fluffiness happening. So I'll use my fan brush, the one I use for the clouds. Where are you, sir? And I'll pick up the titanium white, the good stuff, the nice, thick, good stuff out of the tube. And we'll pretty much, oh, see that there? You don't want it big and thick. You want some air in the middle of it. And we're going to dance across the top of this, that broken up but white colour of white, just on top of this wave here. 
all the way along. There's a koala's head. Okay, it's starting to get a bit choppy out here. And we want to come down here. There we go on there like that. And keeping a lot of openness in here, if you know what I mean, okay? That's our wave. Now we can chisel the paint on your brush like this, okay? So we're getting a nice chiseled edge on our fan brush there. And if you're artistic and arty and crafty enough, we can try and get some real dominant, follow these lines, some real dominant falls of water there. Maybe like that, nothing too much. Okay, that's good enough. Now we want some white. Where are we? Let's get to the end of the painting there. We want to bring some into the painting. So that little filbert brush I used to paint all this bottom in, I'm just cleaning that, picking up some of that white paint. And you don't want your brush wet with the paint, you want it dry. So I'll pick up some more again. And I want to see from here, I want to get some shimmery bits. So let's hope we can, but we don't want them too loudly white. I'll, I'll, my put the tint of the um, turquoise in there, just the slightest, see there? Can you see on that? Yeah. And we want to get some, just some white coming down. Now we're grabbing the fan brush again and that little bit that we disturbed with the um, turquoise, this is going to be our white because we want to be able to crack it with some pure white. That's why I've just tainted it with a little bit of um, the, that turquoise. Now this is the, the frothy bit at the beginning. Well that's a bit too... Now leave some of this color here under this okay but we're dancing it on this is all just you know the wave it's all at the beginning of the beach there it'll make sense when the painting's done so leave some of that purpley color that we've mixed there and get all this fluffing in front of the camera there or in front of the picture there and then we can pop some of this with pure white. All right. Now I'm using some of that color to weld this into that before we crack it on with the pure white, okay? So we're welding it together. Okay, it's just something I wanna do. Come on, get on there. Okay, and then we'll just finish this off with the good old pure white. Okay, so now we're gonna get um, spray off this. So we want that bit there. This white's gonna make that stand out more. Set it back. And we want bits of spraying up now, like come over there a little bit. Over there, that's it. And mainly where this fold is, bits spray up in the air. Careful not to make them too blobby. It's up to you how you do this. Bits spraying off the back of the fold there of the wave. Just think you're at the beach and think what a wave looks like. You, you'll be able to do it, it's all right. There we go. And maybe if you want, some bits here are just really, oh, we don't want them looking like birds. Some of this bit's spraying up as well. The wind's hitting it. It's got droplets here and there. There we go. And now we're going to grab that pure white, like I said, and just finish off this bottom bit here with rolling foam. 
foam froth hitting the actual bank of the um, shore there. Okay, I'm just getting the corner of this fan brush and all these bits that I put at the top, I'm just teasing them a little bit to create that misty, wet, misty water floating in the air kind of look. Just using the corner there, getting rid of some of those hard lines just so it looks a bit more artistic, okay? All right, and we're pretty much ready now to paint our little koala. All right, it's looking all right so far. We've got to get something pointy and not so messy, and we'll pull all this um, tape off. I suppose a pair of tweezers would be great as well, okay? So we're gonna get all this tape off. <laughs> there you go. You're thinking, Ian, you're so bloody far away. So I'm going to bring you over here just so you can watch me peel it off. Because some things like this can be so satisfying, can't they? Yeah, so I reckon they could anyway. So come on over here and let's all get satisfied together. Okay, where are we? I've got me... I've just got a pointy knife here. And like I said, it takes a bit of prep for this painting. Get your picture drawn on there. Well, you can do this even without the koala or put him on a different background. But Chris C from my last Friday Night Live said, can we do something sophisticated like a koala surfing? They did say holding a can of beer, but I'm not, I won't put a can of beer in there. Okay, so now, look, the surfboard is behind the koala. So I'm going to do the surfboard first dry it and then put the koala in front that way everything's on top and coming on top of each other so they're really sharp all right what color surfboard are we going to have i'm going to do a yellow and a red one pretty much a surf life saving color now i'm not going to put red and yellow on here because it'll be opaque so i'm going to just prime in the surfboard white okay using probably some of just the the craft paint it's very opaque and i'll be able to see my lines through it so we're going to prime it up like so okay now use your titanium white or the flow white but don't have any retarder in this we're not blending and needing it to be wet for a long time okay all right i've primed all this in and before i put the color on it just so as it doesn't look like it's sitting there hopefully this will work i'll put some whitewash from his surfboard into the wave as well. That way we can not disturb the color of it once it gets painted. I'm hoping this is gonna look all right. Just where he's gone through the water. I've got the camera zoomed in a bit. We've got some sort of wash coming from his board into the wave. Now we'll paint the, the surfboard. Okay, I want to have the outer area red and the inside yellow. So if you want my opinion, do the outer one first. So as when you put the yellow one on, you can make it nice and tight against the red or the outer, the inner to the outer. So Let's get our brush on its edge there, and we want a nice, sharp edge. I'm assuming surfboards are nice, bright, colourful objects. All right, I've dried that and I've touched up the edge with white again and dried it so you won't see red under this yellow. And now I'm going to get this as tight as I can against that red. And just this is Indian yellow.
Okay, next, what I'm gonna do next is fill in this inside of his mouth and his eyes, so as then we can paint the rest of his fur and everything over the top and sit them back instead of trying to do them on top. Now with that, I want to paint this white so as our paint's going to not be opaque. I'm not worried about going outside the lines here. This is like priming up the whole eye area. I'll get rid of that big blob. So we're gonna prime up the whole eye area with white, dry it. And what else is there? Probably the inside of the mouth, because we'll have a bit of red in there, so we'll prime the inside of his mouth up as well. All right, dry that. I've just got forest green here. I'm using a small filbert, I don't know if I told you. Now you don't want this green to clash with the wave color. Very little detail. There we go. Okay, I've dried that. Now we want to give him a black pupil. Just a nice dark black one there, if you could see that, I hope. And a little bit on this side. And get a bit of bright white just to put that glare in the eyeball. In between the green and the black there. Just like that, that'll do. Not too big your dag, Ian. So I want a darker red just for his mouth and a bit of a brighter red for the for the tongue. So I've mixed up a little bit of black in there. Let's get this all the way in there. So it's like a dark red. Get that in there nice and colored, then I'll dry this. And we'll put a red tongue in there. So let's see if we can get this without any white showing. If I didn't dry it, uh, it'll be turning pink. Now I'm gonna grab a little, I've just wiped that paint off there, grabbing the littlest of white, just to give the hint of a highlight in his gob as well. There we go. Now I've grabbed some of the red and put in the white and I've added a little bit of the yellow there. I'm just trying to get a skin tone going, some sort of inner ear skin tone before we put all his fur on. So we'll get all this inner ear bit there done. And the other side, yeah, there's some on the other side there. Now make it a bit darker. So what are we gonna do? We'll put a bit of a darker color into it. This bit we use for the tongue and we'll add some of that in there next to it. Just rub it next to it so you can see the different value. Okay, that'll do, that'll do it. And inside his ear here, we're gonna stamp it on just to give it some kind of wow factor in there. And the same on here. Now we're ready just to do the koala. Now the koalas are grey, so I'm gonna use a, a light and a dark grey. I've got some black and white so we can create the features within the object here, like his knee and his fingers, thumbs, okay? So we'll start off with um, the light color so we can see where we're going. So I've just got the mid grey out of the tube here. And we'll start cutting in around his eyes nice and tight. Don't ruin the detail you've done there. And get the edge of him done, nice and tight. I'll give him a dark nose, but we wanna, that white we put in the eye, we don't wanna lose that. And see the inner, inner lines within this little character now. We'll use the darker value of gray to accentuate those bits and pieces.
Okay, I've got his head area done and I want to grab the darker grey just to create, see like his eyebrow here. I mean, this is going to dry very dark. So be careful. This is going to add the features like his mouth smile. All the way over here. Come across the top of his mouth there. Find what brush is going to work for you for this. And we want to give this eyebrow a bit here and in front of that ear. How's that looking? Yep. And also, he's got some whispery hair up there, so we'll use this darker colour for that. Just something to accentuate his mop top. Bit of hair up there. And now, while I finish his head, we've got to separate his head from his body as well. So we're going to do that. Just like that. And I want to give him some hairy, so I'm coming around this side of the ear and giving some of this darker colour off the side of his cheek there. I'll just show you while I'm here, the, the thumb is pretty much there. So we can just... Is that well, a word? Accentuate? He needs his nose done. I think for his nose, I'm going to grab some black with that grey, the darker grey, and just give him a real darker grey nose. And I can, if I need to, highlight it. So let's get this on there. They've got like a big teaspoony nose, these bears. And just a bit of trivia, if you didn't know, those people that aren't from Australia. I'm still, I'm sure it's still a fact. All koalas have chlamydia. And we'll just smudge while it's wet on this side of his nose there. Uh, Nice and tight around the edge there. Makes for a great painting. I'm using a filbert because it's got that round tip on it, like a cat's tongue. And I can get these round bits where I need them to be. Nice and sharp. Okay, I've dried all that. And now we're gonna put the inner lines in, so Pretty much for his ankle there. Get this paint nice and inky if you can so you get movement off your brush. And we're going to put the inner lines everywhere. So we're going to come down for his knee here and bring that all the way around up there. toes in <laughs> toes uh, they, they have like um, little claws they got sharp claws these things they have a little fluffy tail and we'll get some fur coming down his manly chest I'm pretty sure he's a manly koala this one Thumb a bit of definition there. And his fingers. Just trying to add some bits of the darker colour now where I can. Just so it doesn't look so floaty. I don't know. A bit of darkness under his mane up there.
What do we need? A bit of dark in his inner ear, you reckon? That's looking all right. What I'm doing, I've decided, I wasn't going to, but it's a cartoon character one, so I'm putting this darker grey all the way around this edge there so it doesn't look half odd and half completed, you know, so pretty much where I can have some lines around him. Okay, I'll... I'll just autograph it and we'll whack a frame on it, see how she looks. Put one down in the bottom here. Now check the links in the description below. There's about nine or ten there, or maybe more. All right. We'll put the frame on there, see how it looks. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Pretty much me big wave with the surfing koala. A bit of an Australian theme in there. Someone wanted it, so we've done it okay. And he's surfing on there. Good Aussie koala. Not too shabby, eh? All right, I hope you liked this exercise. And I'm sure if you didn't, you'll let me know in the comments below, won't you? All right? Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.